miles away. Just the thought of it flying to actually go destroy something now uh, kind of makes you sick. The Iraqis had never seen what a battleship could do. And when Desert Storm started and we shot all our missiles, then we eased on up north and started popping loose with our 16-inch guns. And within four or five days, after shooting 16-inch rounds day and night, the next thing you know, the enemy just disappeared. They went 23 miles inland just to get away from this big thing. Shades of the old battleship, 54-year-old shells which were designed to fight Hirokito, are now bombing the troops of Saddam Hussein. Look right here, date of manufacture, 1937 is when the projectile was manufactured. Shades of the new battleship, an unmanned remote-controlled model airplane is equipped with a camera. The gunners can now actually see their targets over the horizon. It would be similar to people who are watching the war here at home. You're watching us shoot at something, and you know it's you shooting because you feel the presence of the gun shoot, the whole ship shakes. Then you wait 40, 50 seconds on a monitor, you see your shells landing in on this area you're shooting at. But it's like watching a, kind of like watching a, a TV show. We were the only ship in the world that had the enemy surrender to that plane. When the plane would come over, the enemy knew that there was 16-inch rounds right behind it, because we were using, this, using it for spotting. It's got an infrared camera on it. And we actually have it on tape, the Iraqis waving a white flag at that plane so we wouldn't shoot at it. The, the Iraqis were scared to death of this ship. It played a major role in the events of the Desert Storm conflict. And for all the criticisms that, the, that, that people keep on the battleships, the fact is it did work. With the business of war taken care of, the Wisconsin heads home. America is waiting to give you a homecoming. The strongest one I think we'll ever witness since VE Day, VJ Day, 1945. Nearly 10,000 people welcome the Wisconsin home to Norfolk, Virginia. Mostly parents, wives, and children those who have not seen their sailors for 233 days. Yet amid the celebration, rumors circulate that the Congress is considering yet another decommissioning. We need to dismiss it, especially following such a successful performance in the Gulf War. Yet by mid-1991, it becomes official. The Wisconsin is scheduled for decommissioning yet again. With the end in sight, the Wisconsin invites former crew members, those from World War II and Korea, to join those from Desert Storm for an Atlantic Ocean farewell cruise. 37 years since I've been on this vessel. <laughs> Thank you. And for many of the older veterans, this is an opportunity to revisit what was perhaps the most significant time of their lives. I almost fell down and kissed the deck because I was happy to be back. War on a battleship, the common rite of passage that these men took through life. Well, I choke up. This ship was good to me. It was good to me too. I came on here, youth. A boy, and left a man. Oh, yeah. Yet at a reported $1 million a day operating cost, the Congress tells the Navy the battleship has got to go. I'm a sentimental old fool. I mean, I, you get attached to a ship. You fall in love with it, you know? I mean, you go home on leave for two weeks, and when you come back, you kiss the deck because you're so glad to be back aboard your ship. And so what I did, I chose to retire early. I'm retiring on the 9th of August, just so I won't have to watch her I, it, it go out of commission. It, it would break my heart. It's like seeing your best friend die. It would break. I could not stand it. I, I don't even know if I can come to the decommissioning ceremony. I don't even know if I can do it. Ah, get a little very out here now. All right, bud. March off the crew. September 30th, 1991. After only three years since her rebirth, including the Gulf War, Battleship Wisconsin is decommissioned, sentenced to a mothballed existence of undetermined length. Many speculate that a ship built for World War II, no matter how modernized, no matter how successful in war, 
will never again find a niche in the modern Navy. And so her sailors march off her decks, perhaps forever, marking the end of an era in naval history.